right, so let's get started for today. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining uh, today. Welcome to our weekly 30 minute webinar. My name is Dan Schmidt, systems engineer here at Verify, and I'll be your host uh, for today's session. Today, we're joined by our uh, infamous Matt Sykes, aka Matty Ice, and he'll be describing <laughs> today's demo. Uh, today, for, for today's uh, webinar, he's going to cover ways to build BU or business unit based reports within the Verify application. Uh, first, we're going to uh, start off with a quick overview of our company and what we do. We'll then uh, join Matt and jump into the live demo. We'll then pause for some Q&A and get some of your questions answered. Uh, please note, if you do have any questions uh, throughout the duration of the demonstration, please direct those into the Q&A panel uh, within the WebEx and not the chat panel, just to ensure we all see those. After Q&A, we'll reward one lucky winner, a $50 Amazon gift card. So hang around to see if you have won. So a quick overview of Verify and what we do. Verify is the preferred analytics and management solution for Cisco collaboration. We provide industry leading CDR reporting and call analytics, customizable dashboards and widgets, UCCX reporting, remote phone control, change management and DID management. But in today's session, we're gonna be focusing on Verify's call analytics tools and different ways to present uh, BU based reports. If you have any other questions on any of the other features displayed here, we can most definitely take those offline and get some of those questions answered for you. Before we do get started today, please keep in mind that Verify Now does offer a consultative service. So anything you are seeing today that you don't feel like doing, Verify can now do it for you. Uh, Verify's wonderful SE team will be engaged on a one-on-one -on -one basis to remotely provide additional consulting, unassisted reporting, dashboarding, configuration and system monitoring assistance. This is a service that provides a dedicated Verify SE to do any of the heavy lifting for you and where we become an extension of your organization. For more information, please contact us and we'd be glad to speak more in depth about our new offering uh, for you. So let's get the demo started. Matt will get started. So let me pass you the ball, Matt. All right, thank you, Dan. All right, there you go, Matt. There we are, thank you. All right, everyone should be able to see my screen. Okay, uh, just wanna make everyone aware to this morning we did release uh, Verify 12.2 EFT. So definitely reach out to us or visit our website and click on this link to contact our beta team for an upgrade to our current 12.2 EFT, which we're very proud of. Um, okay, so today's webinar, business unit based reporting. Okay, so I'm using our brand new 12.2. So let me hop into my lab here real briefly for us and we'll get the show on the road. I will um, be kind of use, using today's webinar as a continuation of Dan's uh, webinar from last week with regards to the 12.2 custom labels. So we'll definitely be using those in today's webinar. So we will be uh, touching on that a lot. So I'm gonna start off within the uh, call analytics ad hoc history search is where I love to live because I can build and do anything I want from this module for lack of a better term. Uh, let me go ahead and just pick on maybe myself as a quick example. I use a bi-directional calling party or final call party number. Outside of the default one, I'll use my own DN. I will cover, let me just real briefly, grab some data from previous month. And just list this out here for us, everything else I have pre-built. Okay, so what I wanna list out here is just some, just some general regular CDR for my agent extension. And let's take a quick look at it. As I mentioned, we're, I'm going to touch on a lot of the, uh, the, the new custom labels, but very easily at a high level here, I've got you know, 201 calls from my extension for you know, previous month, which is August. So we can see inbound and outbound calls to me, see my device, my end user ID, some other information, my UCM department information. So now all this is nice and good and well, and this is how you know, the standard you know, UCM CDR fields are displayed as, in the standard instance within Verify. Most certainly, I'll go to the show hide columns here real briefly. This is what I'm listing out on the current page at the moment. Um, a lot of the uh, originating and terminating pieces so I can cover both sides of the table. But once again, the CUCM ca capitalized in the acronym of the capital CUCM, that denotes, you know, that's metadata. We do actual query from call manager. So that's thusly why I have you know, that listed in the background there with some of my departmental information. Most certainly we have the kitchen sink over here on the left. But these fields right here, may, these are out of the, the out-of-the-box or the standard, standard system default 
labels. Most certainly if I wanted to, and I already have some labels pre-built for myself, because I want to utilize some of the org functionality we're going to get to momentarily, I'm going to use my label set. So within my lab here, it's going to modify all those column headers for me on my 201 calls on my extension DN. Now here we are. Okay, so now maybe this is more interpretable for me maybe as a, as a user. So I can see, uh, and we can very easily hover over these guys to see you know, what the custom attribute, what the original attribute was or the, what the original label from UCM was. So very easily here, I can see you know, that my originating department is field. My originating you know, uh, manager is actually Bruce Wayne or Batman. You can see my ID, all that good stuff there. So where does this information come from? Well, it comes from call manager because we do not keep a, let me move this out of the way. Because we do not keep an end user directory within Verify. There we are. So within Verify, we, we actually queried the UCM for the end user or the metadata information. So let me just hop into my call manager real briefly and I will pick on myself. Okay, so within my UCM lab here, I'm going to jump into my end users, pull up myself real briefly, and I will be referencing back my lab here in a moment. Let me go find my own user. Here I am. Okay, so this is information for my end user, the configuration for my end user. I can see most certainly that it is LDAP synchronized. So this information for my profile is being fed from an active directory sync. Okay, that's good. Got a lot of the, the normal stuff, first name, last name, um, DN, as well as the mail, department, manager, all that stuff is good, as well as my control device, my cell phone device here. Okay, so now this information is fed from Active Directory, but how is it fed from Active Directory? And the next question is, can I get more information from Active Directory to get populated on my UCM end user? And the answer is yes, you most certainly can. And I'm going to segue here into the system section within UCM, go into the LDAP section, go into uh, the LDAP directory, and we'll actually be able to take a look at the Active Sync that happens within our Active Directory and my lab server, or I suppose this, uh, this UCM lab. So I'll hop into this uh, LDAP configuration, and this is pretty standard for you know, LDAP synchronizations for standard fields to be synchronized with the uh, with the UCM users. So we'll see here, you know, user ID, middle name, manager, all that good stuff, first name, last name, department, <clears throat> all that's there. But what we have the avail what the, the availability that CallMeter does allow is for custom attributes also, so it's some additional attributes to be synchronized with the end users as well. So we actually do have those, and let me just show you real briefly. I'm going to turn off my Label set here real briefly and just hop back into the show hide columns because there's just a couple pieces that I do want to add. Okay, so we'll see here custom attributes. So that's when we see these in here. So originating dial or terminating UCM end user custom attribute, those are going to be coming from the UCM end user profile from potentially an, um, an additional custom user sync, if you will in addition to the uh, the regular standard pieces. So within our lab environment, we are synchronizing city and office attributes from Active Directory into our end users within UCM. So within Verify, I may want to see those, and I, I do know I have them mapped, so let me just throw these in here. Uh, originating and terminating I'm using. These are the standard fields, so they don't look that pretty to the eye in their default naming convention, but we will Flip the script on that momentarily. Pardon me. Okay, we'll save this real briefly. Okay, so the custom attributes is kind of what are, where I'm driving here. So we can have up to one through five. So we can have five additional custom attribute fields from Active Directory synced to the UCM end users. Now I'll go ahead and I'll pull up my end user here within our Active Directory. Let me just slide this over here real briefly. Here's my Active Directory. Here's the bucket of our users. Here's my own specific AD record itself. Um, obviously, we see the normal standard stuff, first name, last name, display name, the organization. I, I, like I said, I do report to Batman. Um, as, but as well as there are other fields, there are other attributes within this the proper, the user properties within AD that we can utilize to sync. So for instance, Dan, Danimal has actually been nice enough to set this up for me. He set up city and office as additional attributes that we're syncing for the users. So for the office, let me just slide right here, physical office delivery name and city, which is, which is L, those are LDAP. Uh, matches, but we can see here, I am using one of them. Dan has been nice enough to uh, populate the office field for me, but as well as we're using the city as well. Now for the city, I've used that to actually be an office code. So populating that information, I've done so for the other surrounding users in this AD group as well. And that actually gets synced over to my end user within UCM. Now, however, because that has been synced, it's not going to be seen from the forefront, from the from the UCM UI. 
please note that. So even though I have a, a depart, an office code as well as a location code defined on my end user, I cannot see them within the UCM end user configuration UI, but I can most certainly see them in Verify. So very easily here, I added on those custom attributes one and two for the originating and terminating as well on my quick little sample of my own DN here. So very easily, I can see them. I can see my office code here or custom attribute one and you know, custom attribute two, which I'm using for location for this instance here, obviously you've got originating and terminating, but once again, I'm using the standard default labels that everyone's kind of used to seeing, and that most certainly can be a little misleading to some um, more non-technical users will say. So let's me revert back to uh, my, my new uh, math label set that I have overridden, and it'll give me back my 201 calls here, and then most certainly will be, the labels, the column header labels will be much more definable here. So we can see here, I am using originating office code of you know office code 31. My attribute two, which I'm using as a location or originating location here, I'm using is popular with Ice Cave that we saw in my Active Directory user. So all right, that is very good, and we can see that there. I can most certainly you know expand this out to other people within my AD user group if I wanted to check them as well. But I've already done that for us, so let's just save that point there. Okay, so let's now we want to take this now into reporting. So now I kind of take the next step for you know the business unit reporting. Now, most certainly um, the pieces out of call manager for you know, the standard synchronized pieces, you know, the department name, first name, last name, UID, and all that good stuff, that's already there. But now if we want those additional attributes and maybe even to group search or report on those, I most certainly have a laundry list of them here for us. So let me go ahead and pull those up. But I first want to start with maybe just kind of what people may more be normally seeing within our application with regards to you know, the org-based reporting. So on this one here, I'm just solely picking off you know, a handful of uh, the agents that were in question there. Some high-level summarization for totals, for abandonment voicemail uh, percentages as well. But then I'm grouping them by their default, I guess, department definitions from UCM, which is you know product, field, and I think finance is my other, correct. As well as that I'm giving a sub subgrouping or secondary grouping of the agent ID uh, with it as well. So we can certainly see those, the high level summarization, you know, your originating or your outbound and then your inbound. Obviously those labels can be most certainly misleading as prior to our custom labels that we now have in 12.2. So I'm going to enhance that as well. But this is primarily what people would normally be seeing from a, I guess an org based report from Verify. So now with the available options for custom attributes from an AD sync, I now have more options here at my disposal. So for instance, knowing that in my, in my excuse me in my lab environment here that i am using these custom attributes here i do have my users fed with these custom attributes so i can most certainly use them now if i were to show hide columns now that i'm using my my, uh, my custom list now all the labels obviously have been morphed and i can certainly hover over them to see exactly what the original attribute was or what the original label was but most certainly here uh, we don't need to see you no know, custom you know end user custom attribute one through five, nobody's gonna to wanna to see that. No user, I wouldn't even wanna see it as a report uh, viewer myself. But now from this information, what we can do from this is we can maybe bypass using or use in addition to some of the UCM department definitions to kind of build it up a little further. So let me move on to our uh, next report that I have here, which with this one I'm keying off of are going to be these custom attributes with the labels as well. And before I kind of show us that, I probably should have shown the report example, excuse me. Let me segue into my report bucket here. I am going to showcase this one right now. This is going to be an org-based report utilizing attribute one just for my name label. And within the search sets, I could have used department. I could have used uh, end user IDs. I could have used DNs, which I'm doing here in this one report. Others, I'm using different ones, but I'm getting the same results. Six of one, half a dozen of the other. Definitely the dealer's choice or, or preference. Within the grouping though, the grouping is key. So the grouping, I am going to be utilizing those new codes. This is actually, since we're using my custom label list, I do know that this off code is an office code coming from attribute one. Uh, here's attribute two as well. But I've, used, I've shortened up the names for the labels because nobody wants to see the long laundry list name that is default for it. So definitely the custom labels are definitely gonna come in handy here. So with this information, I'm going to group these users you know, by, by highest to lowest, give some high level summarized metrics for them. Also give them, you know, relabeled grouping statistics as well with abandonment and then some charting and all of that good stuff and that's pretty much exactly what we have here so i'm utilizing a custom attribute one 
So for my search set, based off of those DNs, I've got a total of 899, but then the grouping, I want to use those custom attributes or those with those new labels. So I'm using my office code synced from Active Directory on my end users. So I know that I can utilize this for reporting, or for a little deeper reporting as opposed to just, you know, simply department. So now this, I'm just utilizing the inbound variety here as well. So I, that's why I've not included, you know, a terminated account and all of that. But certainly I do want to potentially include the others as well. So I have some bi-directional um, exposure to my agents. But dealer's choice as well. I mean, you could look at inbound and outbound or a combination therein. So I'm going to segue over to this report where I am using both of them as well. So I'm using outbound call count uh, and inbound call count. Obviously, these can also be shortened up as well because these are labels that I've already relabeled, but I did want them to say originating call count or terminating call count. I wanted to be inbound or outbound. Most certainly, these can be abbreviated as well. The, but the main takeaway here is certainly to see that we're utilizing, you know, additional custom attributes fed from Active Directory that maybe were unknown that could be utilized within the environment. So I definitely know that I have requests for, you know, people that want to report on specific cost center codes, specific account codes, and they don't, they're not available within, Act, they're not available in UCM, apparently, obviously, but they can most certainly be fed through an Active Directory sync like we're doing here. So this is the same data set, and I'll show a very similar report, but using the secondary uh, custom attribute of two. And this is my location, so it's the same exact information. So if you if you notice, the high level summarized stats are not changing, just the grouping information because I'm grouping it a little differently. But it's the same users at the end of the day, grouping it by different metrics. This one this one being by uh, the cause code uh, custom attribute two, excuse me, and then by agent. And I'm including you know the vo the abandonment and voicemail as well, um, the data tables, the volume tables, the charts for the search set as a whole by date by time by the users. A uh, nice little long laundry list here, but as well as we do have the availability when running reports, and I'll show you a little bit, that we can also include the custom label appendix. So I have a, quite a few of them here. So we can see at the very bottom of the report, if you want, we want to know if a report user wants to see or a report reader wants to see, okay, what does that actually translate to if they're not you know, comfortable, I suppose, with the custom labels, we can always include the appendix. So just wanted to make that uh, aware. Um, let's see here, and now, um, I'll use this now. Here's a different report that I wanted to mock up as well. So now this one, I think this actually bears a little more fruit, and I will uh, kind of explain that at the uh, at the report level. So this report, uh, I'm using uh, attribute one and two as I had before, they're just using the custom attribute of one, which is the uh, the office code. Um, two is using the location code; those are fine. But now these other ones, the right here, I want to show the configuration I'm using within them. Within these search sets, I'm I've actually I'm actually breaking up my three departments that I want to query for the search set bidirectionally because I'm using originating or terminating, but I'm picking on the the lookups from the uh, the end user. So I'm looking at field, finance, and product, I believe, correct. And then for the grouping, that but I want to group them by the originating or terminating office code, and then by the agent bidirectionally, of course, as we can see here. So we can see the inbound and the outbound. Well, certainly we can limit that to one direction if need be. Adding in obviously new custom attributes or uh, custom labels on the existing grouping options, and then some charting and all that good stuff as well. So that's what I just want to reference here real briefly, as opposed to utilizing and lumping them all into one initial search set as I was doing on some of these others. As you can see, I was just utilizing one search set, but in this one, I have broken it out now by the specific departments. So we can see the department totals, abandonment rate, percentages, et cetera. But then in the grouping section, then I have the option then to go ahead and use my custom attributes that have been recently fed. So if I use the office code or if I use the location code, I will be bearing the same fruit, just laid out a little differently. Once again, giving very high level summarized definitions of what the agents are doing over this time frame. I am using the uh, the August, my, I guess the month of August uh, data set in my lab here, but we can see the users listed out, what their locations are, but also at the very high level, we do have the top summarized where they're all coming from. So there's no guesswork there for you. And then once again, obviously, we're gonna give you the data tables by date. I think by hour of day I'm doing as well. I am correct. And then obviously the statistics by those scenarios as well, charting in the PDFs, all that good stuff, then with a, a nice appendix at the end. There we are. Okay, so that is very good there, but if I want to take it even a step further. Maybe I want to see detail in that. Well, a PDF isn't going to, is going to be a little cumbersome when you're kind of trying to run a large size data report, so I want to include something additional. So I actually created these additional ones down here, the two and three details. When these, what I'm doing is I'm suppressing a little information, but I'm utilizing HTML so I can fit more, more, uh, more data elements here on the page for the real estate. 
um, so same information we saw in the PDF here, but I'm including incorporating the detail because I want to be able to have the drill down capability. So we can see here, same information that we saw in the PDF, same numbers, but perhaps maybe I want to drill down to a specific office code and see some of the details or some of the summarizations therein. Also want to make case in point, we can also include call accounting costs. Do we want to potentially issue, um, utilize some bill back for some of the outbound traffic? Can most certainly do that and can, and can include that in the grouping summarizations as well. But back to uh, office code 31, let's say. I'm gonna click on that, it's gonna shoot me down the report. So now I get a, a high level summarized count of what the uh, Office Code 31 has done over this August timeframe as far as outbound, inbound, totals, et cetera. But then it'll break it down by the agents there under. And I'm ranking this, I believe, from highest to lowest as far as total call count is concerned. So Mike is the, uh, the lucky, the lucky uh, leader, leader on the leaderboard, let's say. So here we're going to break down all of Mike's calls for the, uh, the time frame of August, but as well as I'm also including those additional options as well. So I'm including the, uh, the office codes or those custom attributes. I'm including the uh, custom, custom attribute two of location. So we can certainly do that, whether it's on the originating or the terminating side, whether they're internal calls, we'll be able to see, look like uh, yeah, Mike called Dylan here. So we can certainly see that because caller ID, 11 to 1109, that is Mike's uh, extension off of his IPC. He called over to Dylan, we can certainly see that and include that at the detail level as well. And if there's any corresponding call accounting costs we want to associate, we can most certainly do that as well. So this is uh, attribute one that is utilizing the office code. And this is the other where I'm utilizing the location or custom attribute two, but we don't want to see any of those ugly names. So, so luckily in Verify 12.2, we now have the custom labels to override all of that good stuff. Once again, I can shoot down any one of these if I want to look at Dylan's details of what, he, what he's done for this location over the time frame of August. We can most certainly look at this detail as well. Now, most certainly, including detail in reports, obviously, it's going to make the report much longer. I think I've got an appendix on the back end of this as well. Do I not? And I do. And, and, and once again, we can also include the appendix here as well. So that is a lot of good stuff. And that is definitely how I would recommend and actually encourage people to potentially populate some of the information within the end users from an AD sync that they may be unaware of from those uh, custom attribute syncs that are available, just not uh, obviously seen to the naked eye in the uh, UCM end user UI. So now these are good reports, whether or not we're looking at a, uh, a high level summarized report with all the nice charting you know, in PDF, which is you know, definitely a little more um, prettier on the eye, let's say, or if we're going for a detail where we maybe need HTML to kind of get that drilling cap capacity there. But we can also take this information and apply it to the dashboard widgets. So let me hop right over into the dashboard. I do have some things built here for us. Come on, VPN. There, here we are. Okay, I have a few things uh, already pre-built here. Um, 12.2 EFT is available. Um, but right here at the very top, I want to look at, the, I want to lock in on these two. So what I'm utilizing here are going to be, well, is our custom attributes. So these are one-to-one. -one. So this is me actually utilizing the departmental lookups for the agents within UCM on the inbound variety, where we see product field and finance already being fed from Active Directory on the end users. But also, I also wanna maybe potentially incorporate maybe the custom attributes or the office codes and kind of get high level summarizations for maybe their inbound traffic, or maybe we wanna include uh, outbound as well. We can certainly also embed this that information into uh, trending widgets as well. Waiting for these distribution guys to load. Here we are. Okay, and then as well as we can apply that to the distribution widgets. So I do believe 2827 was kind of one of my high level total numbers at the, on these reports. Yep, 2827, that is correct. So we'll see the, the total call count here. These are exactly the same. Once again, I'm utilizing the custom attribute one of office code here, and I'm using the uh, attribute two or the location actually on the secondary one here. So we can see on the uh, on the donut here, we can see exactly, you know, the uh, the counts, we can hover in on them very easily to, to validate this information within the ad hoc search if we needed to, or we can even build a report or run a report off of this widget information. Correct, here's attrib inbound attribute one, here's inbound attribute two, and then their corresponding definitions within UCM. So correct, here are the agents, here we are all list out here, to, uh, highest to lowest. Counts are exactly the same. We can very easily hover over any of these labels and it'll, initiate exactly a, a pop out there that you can see what the uh, custom label original attribute was. Uh, and also we can throw this into, you know, a capacity widget. So for instance, for my colleagues and myself here in this, in this uh, tutorial here, oh, I've thrown in our extensions based off of one of those uh, pre uh, existing reports. We see the 2827 and very easily at this, uh, within this concurrency widget here, I can see that on AUG5 during the 1230 to 1 p.m. half hour, that there were seven concurrent calls happening during that 30 minute time frame. 
Now, obviously, I'm not worrying about bandwidth with regards to that kind of a number, but potentially, um, maybe we are, could potentially be understaffed or maybe need to uh, look at maybe reorganizing some of the uh, the routing for the uh, some of the queues. Can certainly do that, but very high level, very easily able to take that and mod and, and apply this also into our dashboard widgets. So very uh, easily to have that uh, that functionality there for you. So at that moment, I do believe I'm running a little light on content. So let me see here. Mm -hmm. Covered all that stuff. Okay. So definitely, I would definitely implore you to go ahead and see maybe if you do want to utilize some type of codes or some account or other attributes within UCM to have that actually be reported on from a, a verified perspective. Most certainly, we have our uh, the flexibility and capability of doing that uh, as I've kind of uh, lightly demonstrated here today. But uh, definitely give us a uh, verify support that uh, verify support. Ver support at verify.com and email or visit our website to reach out and uh, communicate with us if you are interested in loading up our new 12.2. So I want to thank everyone for attending today's webinar. And Dan, I will toss the audio back over to you, sir. Excellent. Thank you, Matt. Nice job as always. Mm -hmm. um, before we disconnect, we do have a few questions that I want to get answered uh, for the group attending today. Sure. Uh, so uh, first question is from Laura. Uh, Laura asks, is there a limit to the number of custom label options to include uh, within your set, or even if there's a limit uh, to sets to or a limit of sets to choose from? So, yeah, I think in your example, right? Uh, yeah, there's no limit, uh, basically taking any of our default options uh and converting those names so yeah just it, it's a limit of the number of default options that we have so there's definitely no limit uh as far as the individual naming labels go and then we also do not impose any such limits on the number of total sets uh so you could have per user you could have three four five six seven eight label sets associated per user so yeah good question laura the answer very simply is no limits there Hopefully that answers your question. Correct. You can definitely have as many custom label sets as you like, mm -hmm. which are, um, once again, sorry to inter interject here, which, which once again are um, applied at the user level. Yep. Uh, Jason has a question. What module is this reporting included in? So this is uh, now coming in our call analytics reporting. So this is all new to 12.2. Uh, uh, that's our custom label sets. The the custom attribute portion that Matt talked about it that's been in for a while um, it's just kind of bridging the two now from using the custom attributes in conjunction with the custom label sets that's now in 12 too but yeah that's all uh, comes baked in um, the call analytics tool Jason good question there all right Pete has a question here is there any reference of custom attributes mappings in call manager to the custom attribute number that verify is seeing? Um, yeah, so I think you're referring to, uh, as Matt's showing right here, uh, the the custom user field name. Uh, the the number really is just the order of entries. So city here or uh, Active Directory attribute L for location. That would be referred to as uh, custom attribute number one in Verify. So it's just basically the order that they show up in Call Manager is the sequential order that Verify sees them in. And then again, you could rename those via the custom attributes as Matt illustrated too. So, mm -hmm. Dan, is that is, is that uh, by uh, in, inception or creation, or yes. is that alphabetical? Okay, yeah. by creation. Okay, thank you. All right, one more question uh, from Fahad. Um, I don't see the secondary grouping type option in my instance of verify. Is this new to 12.2? Um, so, Matt, if you could show uh, the secondary grouping option. So, there's a, that's a two part answer. Um, it is not new to 12.2. That is, uh, was brought either in 12.1.6 or either 12.1.7. However, you will not see the secondary grouping type option. Um, if you're not using like uh, either department, you know, you typically you'll have department and end users, or um, I think there's device pool and devices. Um, so you're not going to see the secondary option for all of your primary grouping selection types. Um, so it's really 
uh, finite in that sense. It really only, we only developed it for the cases that make sense, uh, really what it comes down to. Um, but obviously with Matt's illustration of the custom label sets too, any user-based information that would have a primary and secondary option um, mm -hmm. as he's showing here uh, right now. So that's most likely why you're not seeing it if you are not on at least 1216. Correct, yeah, we've had that for a little while. Um, so that is all the questions we have at this time. Uh, if anyone does have any further questions, please do submit your questions in the Q&A panel at this time. We'll give you just a couple more seconds to do so. All right, I kicked you over the, uh, the ball. Thank you, sir. Okay. All right. So if there are no other questions, uh, we'll go ahead and announce this week's $50 Amazon gift card winner. And the winner for this week is Michelle Sherborn. Thank you, Michelle, uh, for joining us today. Uh, and thank you for the rest of you all for joining today. We know you're, you're very busy and have tight schedules, so we definitely appreciate your time. Just as a quick reminder before we wrap up, uh, as Matt mentioned, uh, earlier, our 12.2 EFT release was just posted this morning. Uh, so if you are interested in becoming a beta tester for this new 12.2 version, please uh, submit a request to beta at verify.com. And as always, to continue on our weekly series, next week's uh, webinar is going to be uh, presented uh, by yours truly, me, uh, <laughs> uh, covering the topic uh, of our as-built reporting tool, tips and tricks. Uh, so I know we've covered a lot on call analytics and the different uh, components within that. We're kind of going to expand that out to some of our other utilities. So uh, we look forward to having you all on that session as well. And uh, just as also as another uh, reminder, if you haven't done so or have not attended uh, our our block party that we did in January. We're continuing that series in our own now house party, kind of a smaller rendition. Uh, but as you can see here, five thousand dollars worth of prizes, only a couple hours uh, worth of time. So if you're if you'd like to register for that uh, and kind of see what we're doing on the product front uh, and get some deep dive uh, sessions uh, in, please direct yourself to verify.com/party to register for that. Well, that is all for today, everyone. Thank you again, uh, once again, for joining. Uh, have a great day. Thank you. Take care, all. Thank you.